This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easiest way to create the website of your dreams. Ah, oh, the herbs, Sims in the city. This is the third console release in the Sims series. Released in 2004 for the GameCube, Game Boy Advance, Xbox, and PlayStation 2. This one takes a little bit of a different approach than the other Sims console games, at least for home console. The handheld version is entirely different than what I'm gonna be playing in this video. But the herbs on console takes you to Herbsville and allows you to interact with different subcultures in various districts across the map. This game is all about style, gaining reputation around town, and upgrading your pad until you reach the ultimate goal of being super famous and super rich. You gotta gain respect amongst the sims around town by dressing the part, doing quests, and defeating villains. This game is also very special because it features the Black Eyed Peas and some simlish versions of their songs. I've gotta say, it's gotta be one of my favorite favorite console spin-off versions of The Sims that I've played thus far. It's just so fun and quirky and it has so much personality baked in and it just plays like exactly how I want a console version of The Sims to play. So let's get into The Herbs, Sims in the City. The first step to creating our herb is picking where our herb's style originates from. Each neighborhood has its own style and swag. Are we into leather spikes and attitude? Or high tops and low risers? Maybe we're artsy and wear black turtlenecks, or maybe we're into bright rave kid colors. I chose Gasoline Row, where bad girls and tough guys hang out. The herb customization options are limited in the initial cast, but don't worry, we'll get way more to work with as we play. Our first apartment, 98th Ave. Will I I am is here to greet us. Yes. This game features members of the Black Eyed Peas and even some simlish versions of their music. It mostly just sounds like if you made schnitzel from chowder cover Let's Get It Started while smothering him with a pillow. I also can't really confirm if this cover is of the re-release of the Black Eyed Peas Let's Get It Started or, you know, the other one. The music in this game is definitely a highlight though, featuring many real-life band Simlish songs. Will introduces us to Darius, the man with the highest reputation in the city. Darius shows us how to do a power social, which I'm not really sure what that is yet, but I kind of rocked it. I might have some potential to get some rep in this city with moves like that. Darius and Will leave me to move into my new apartment, which I will have to pay rent on. So we should probably learn how to make some money soon. Will was nice enough to give me some furniture and using my fancy pants cellular device, I can start using it to decorate my place. He gave me a couch, a fridge, and a shower. No toilet or bed though. We'll have to figure out how to buy those on our own. There's no like build or buy mode where you can just buy things while you're decorating. You have to like go out and get them. So we should check out our neighborhood, Gasoline Row. I can take a job for some money, use that money on style, and meet some of my neighbors to build up my rep. Building rep will unlock more districts for us to visit. Our first job is in the chop shop. These guys are rough and tough and they're gonna make me strip bikes and make sausages. Oh, I love this. I love that I'm actually interacting with my Sims job and playing a little mini game. This is so cool. I never had any of the packs in the Sims where you go to work with them, but this is really easy and fun. It feels like a great way to play a Sims game on console to me personally. I love stripping bike. Can't forget to make sausages for the new customers apparently and boom, job complete. We got 300 bucks and a new social move. Let's buy a few things from the shop here. A TV for my herbs entertainment need and no bed or toilet. Damn, we're really in the gutter. There's a few sims to meet in Gasoline Row and I'm trying my best to socialize with them. They think I'm a fucking loser though, so it's a little tough to nail the interactions. I did get invited to visit the backroom club later, so I can't be that lame. Most herbs will teach you a new social interaction if you talk to them enough, which helps a lot with making friends since certain herbs will prefer certain interactions. I gotta take care of my sim a little bit, so we're gonna plop down our new TV and unit and and relax. <gasps> I unlocked a pet, a pet bulldog. Oh my, that's so cute. Oh my God, he's adorable. I love him. 
Just me and my dog watching uh, barrel TV. Since I have no bed, I do have to sleep on the couch. I can take care of a lot of my needs in the district itself though. Like I can eat sausages here and use the toilet at my work. Darius is here for the party though, and I wanna get in. Just gotta get past this bouncer. You ain't getting in dressed like that. You know what? I wouldn't let me in either. I can change my style here to match some of the other herbs in the area. We got new hats, hairs, sunglasses, cute tops, pants, and even tattoos. I'm working with a tight budget here, so I can only buy so much, but just enough to get let into the back room party. Darius awards me a new power social, and I just start partying it up. I'm trying to collect as many socials as possible. The next day, reality sets in, and I go back to work. Each career has three levels to it, but are locked by skill points that are obtained through skill objects that I need to buy. So I'm back to the level one grind. After getting paid, I purchased the mental skill object and went back home to my apartment to use it. I love my little bulldog. This item takes up basically my whole fucking apartment. <gasps> no shot. I have to mash A to build skill points. Oh, you're joking. That's exactly what I have to do. Well, I did praise how interactive this game was earlier. Guess I'm just in for the ride now. I feel like I'm gonna give myself carpal tunnel. Who the hell is this guy in my apartment? I'm kind of in the middle of something, dude. He's stealing my couch. What did I do to deserve that? And now he's just leaving with my couch. Great. Now I have nowhere to sleep. Guess I gotta go buy a new one. And since I spent all my money on a couch, I have to go to work again. Fortunately, we can now start on level two of the chop shop career. And it's pretty much the same thing with an added goal to be social with other sims. So I chop choppers, grill dogs, and talk to others and complete the job successfully. With my newfound wealth, I bought a few new clothing items. A little splurge didn't kill anybody. We got some new tattoos and some cool flamey pants. How sad. My new couch isn't as cool as the one Will I Am gave me, but I'm exhausted, so it'll have to work for now. And no, I still can't buy a bed from this district. I did, however, unlock the next district with my reputation points, Central Station. We should go see what that's about. Pretty quickly after chatting with some of the Central Station Sims, I got enough rep to enter the party in the cage. But alas, I am not dressed appropriately for the area. Time to suit up. This time we have piercings we can work with. Time to set off some metal detectors. Darius is at this party tonight too, since he's all famous and everything. I managed to get in and unlock the power social for this district, Stink Bomb. These kids are crazy over here. I just love how much personality this game has. I love that each district has its own individual style. In my phone, there are goals for each district outlined, but I can't really figure out what the goals are really since I haven't played much and don't think I've met any of these herbs. I do need to go home and take care of my herb and and puppy. Well, not really my puppy. He doesn't really need me to do anything for him, but you know, it's the principle. That is my boy. Going through my phone, I am able to check out some of the goals for the two districts that I've been to. We have the basic career and reputation goals and some special quests, which again, don't really know what those are for. We'll get to them later. When I revisit Gasoline Row to try to finish the third level of the Chop Shop career, I met with a skill requirement that I haven't unlocked yet. We need 20 mental and 20 physical physical skill. There's no physical skill machine in the shop yet, so I'll be revisiting this later on. We can get started on the career in Central Station though, the piercing job. While I was kind of dicking around, the villain of this area stopped by to cause trouble, I think. With my handy dandy power social, Stink Bomb, I scare him off and he drops a part of Darius's secret machine. I wonder what that's about. The piercing job is very similar to the chop shop job, but impressing. But we're making piercings instead of salvaging bike parts. I also need to make sure I am being sanitary and keeping an eye on my comfort level. This district has an actual bed on the premises. Weird, but I won't question it. We should have more public beds in general. Fuck it. I was able to complete the first level of the piercing job before being hit with another skill requirement for level 2. 10 physical skill. I haven't unlocked a physical skill machine yet, but I have a sneaking suspicion that I need more rep to do so. There's also a few more social goals here at Central Station, so we can kind of kill two birds with one stone here. Before unlocking the physical skill machine, I unlocked the next district, Kicktail Park. Skater alert. A new district means a new set of goals. They are pretty much the same as the other districts with a few special ones. So I guess we just get to start grinding it out. Literally grinding. Oh my God, a skater moment. There's yet another party here with a rep and style requirement and thank 
God, I can finally buy a toilet. But after beating level one of the skater career, I chatted up some skater boys and finally unlocked the exercycle. Let's buy it and get physical. Same thing here, mash A for several minutes until we get to level 10 skill points. That's when we're forced to stop. Work it, girl. With my 10 fancy physical skill points, I'm able to beat level two of the piercing job. I'll need 30 physical skill and 20 artistic skill for level three. I can't just simply go home and grind out more skill points. I need to unlock upgrades for my machines to get past level 10. Can't do that just yet. So we're gonna instead blow money on the ultimate skater style. Of course, I'm going for ramp tramp. <laughs> The bouncer this time says I need more rep. That's fine. My interactions with the herbs of Kicktail Park are easier since I've dressed the part. Rep goes up faster if you match the district swag. Rolanda here introduces us actually to our first special quest, tag graffiti around town. There's three walls around town that I need to find and put Rolanda's tag on. I remember seeing some graffiti walls around some of the other districts, but when I go to tag them, nothing happened and nothing indicated that these were the correct walls anyway. Anyways, I'll figure this out later. The bouncer finally let me into floaters in Kicktail Park. It's a room with a boombox and an inhalation machine, an air machine. <laughs> Let's go whip it, Wendy. No luck on unlocking the machine upgrades or the artistic skill machine. Harry Snivel came by and collected rent. Hey, this is the guy that came in and stole my stuff. My landlord, of course. I should have known. Screw that guy, but I have to pay rent, so. We have so many districts left to unlock, we need to build up our rep to move on to the next area. But also, I don't wanna forget to unlock the power social at the next midnight party at Floaters. The game gives you a lot of resources to make you feel more comfortable hanging around the districts more than your apartment. You can take care of a lot of your needs while out and about with the whole public bed thing and whatnot. There's toilets, vending machines, pretty much everything but a shower stall. So I don't mind hanging around and building reputation until Darius comes by and gives me the skater trick power social. Our next district is the Foundry, where all the emo art kids spend their time. After some socialization, I unlocked my first machine upgrade for the mental skill. I also unlocked a new apartment. We can finally move out of our dumpy little place and into a new one. Let's buy the artistic machine, which I hadn't noticed that we had unlocked, and the mental machine upgrade. And then we're gonna check out our new crib. It's so much bigger, but comes with no furniture. I have to go back to 98th Ave and collect my belongings to bring over here, but I have to leave my dog behind. Very sad. I have no way to bring him. That's really fucked, actually. <laughs> There's so much more room in the Blankwood apartment for my ginormous machines, luckily. Our mental machine has been upgraded and now we're back to mashing. We get to level 20 mental skill and use our artistic machine for the first time. It's a rap battle simulator and now we have level 10 in the artistic skill. More mashing, of course. Our skill tree indicates that there will be more upgrades needed to max our skills. Because the max skill points is 30, you know, you do the math. The foundry is the same as the other districts on paper, really. We have more sims to meet and socialize with, a new sculpting career with three levels, two of which we were able to knock out right away, a party that we have to change our style to get into. This style is my favorite, by the way. This party's lame as shit, though. It's just a room with a battle bots cage. Well, I, I mean, that's kind of cool, but there's not much else to it. Once we knocked out the goals we could access, we headed over to the next neighborhood, Neon East. Neon East is so cute and fun. We get to be a sushi chef and everyone here is dressed so loud and fun. Right away, we're able to do two career levels. I have a goal here to use a stink bomb on someone and I have stink bombs. I chose a random sim to use it on and unfortunately, I think I have to use it on a particular sim because it didn't work. Or maybe I have to talk to Genghis Lincoln first to get the quest. I don't even remember who that was. Since I'm super fucking rich, I bought some new furniture for my pad and decorated it enough to unlock the next pet, a cat. Jesus Christ, that is a skinny cat. That's literally a bag of bones. I'll feed you, buddy. Don't worry. <laughs> Baby's first bed. Can't believe it took me this long to get one. I probably could have gotten one sooner, 
But napping on my couch and sleeping on public lot beds has been working just fine, honestly. Maybe I shouldn't have spent so much money though. Harry snivels back again for rent and I don't have it. I really hope he doesn't take my bed. It's time to up my style game for Neon East and get some cutie clothes. But I need more rep for the party. I did raise my rep quite a bit and unlocked the next physical skill machine upgrade. So I'm gonna do that first and get it out of the way. By getting 20 physical points, I was able to unlock my first level three job back at the chop shop. The added curveball is some guy. Really, I do all the same stuff like strip bikes, make sausages, eat, socialize. But now I have another sim I have to switch to and take care of. I just have to make sure his comfort levels stay high. It's pretty easy though, and now we've completed all three levels of this career. So now that we've partied it up and gotten the power social in Neon East, we get to visit another district. And it just so happens to be the district where the Black Eyed Peas hang out. Before I go there, I'd like to finish the skater career, I was able to knock out all the other levels of that one pretty quickly, and I even completed one of Rolanda's tagging goals. I was right, it just needs to be the correct graffiti wall. We got another machine upgrade too, but I was feeling comfortable enough to go to Cosmo Street and meet the Black Eyed Peas. Oh my god, it's Fergie! Taking out the trash. Why is she walking like that? I decided to change my style so I don't make a fool of myself in front of her, and pretty much jacked her whole look. But I can't get into their party. I don't have enough rep. I just want to party with the black eyed peas. Ugh, I feel so lame. I decided to leave instead of be the embarrassing loser outside of the party and go home. I upgraded the artistic machine and raised my skill level to 20. Just one more upgrade for each machine left now. I need to do something about my reputation. First, let's get as far as we can in the bartending career here on Cosmo Street. And then I start mingling with some of the members of the black eyed peas. I got my rep up quite a bit, but it still wasn't enough. And now we're all stuck here and no one can go in the party because I'm blocking the door. This is so embarrassing. Since everyone's stuck outside though, I can raise my rep up a few points and finally I made it in at 6 a.m. and no one's here anymore. This was a dud. And now Fergie's dying. What the fuck? Thank God, someone came and saved her. I feel like it's my fault somehow. I need more rep to unlock Diamond Heights so we can just stay here on this lot and work on that while also working on the next level of the bartending career. Fergie and I are best buds now. No big deal, guys. Just hanging out with some celebs. But now we're finally invited to Diamond Heights, a penthouse apartment made of gold. There's some more of the same type of goals here, but one especially interesting one. Kiss someone for Taboo. Taboo's back in the last district since he's a member of the Black Eyed Peas. So I go back and speak to him to unlock this quest. I have to kiss either Babette Couture or Cash Monet after getting their friendship up to at least 80. Both Babette and Cash Monet are in Diamond Heights, so I start working on befriending them. Jesus. This is the brightest place ever somehow. It's basically blown out. My relationship with Babette went up pretty quickly, so I figured it was time to plant a kiss. Oh my God. Wrong blonde woman. This is literally not Babette. <laughs> Where is she? This penthouse is only so big. All right, while I wait for her to appear, I took a stab at the modeling career. We were actually able to complete all three levels sequentially here. I know, I'm a natural. By the time we finished, she was back. I gave her a little serenade, smooth as fuck, you know, and I went in for the kill. Success. And she even gave me tips on how to cheat at roulette. Love it. Cash Monet gave me another quest here as well, and with a high high-end style upgrade, I made it past the bouncer and into the party. Darius gave me the power social and we move on to Southside Bridge. I will say, it's getting a little repetitive at this point. Each district has its own set of goals that are copy-paste from the others. Southside Bridge here has a fun little pyrotech job and we get to sabotage the other machine, which is different. I don't mind how many districts there are at all, that's not what I'm saying. I love that each one has its own style to emulate and sims to meet. So to counter the this redundancy, I figure we can work on some of the special quests from around town. The ones that we haven't gotten to yet. Luke asks me to mug some specific sims. I finally got around to talking to Genghis to unofficially unlock the stink bomb quests. We should knock some of these out. And after making it into the party and unlocking the mug power social, I also defeated the villain of this area, Kiki Blunt. I mugged her so hard she ran right out of town and dropped a part of the secret machine. This is something that we can work 
work on while we do more of the same thing with the remaining district, Skyline Beach. It's a rooftop beach, aw, I love it. There's a graffiti wall to tag for Rolanda and a ferret taming career. The most interesting one by far, as well as a new style to purchase. Once I blow through the social and reputation goals as well as some special quests, I have enough rep to enter the party. Our last party. The hot tub seems bugged. I keep breaking it and won't stay in it for more than three seconds. Kinda lame. No worries, we have our last power social and had a great time regardless. Toots gave us a quest to tag faces. I feel like that's really messed up. But okay, I guess I can add that to my list. I'm gonna take a break from accomplishing goals for a moment in order to round out my skills. By this time, I'm super famous and cool and have enough reputation to buy all the machine upgrades. This was my longest button mashing sesh yet. All three skills in one sitting. Who is she? Someone put this girl in eSports. She is a mashing machine. And just like that, all skills maxed, baby. This means we're free to complete all of the careers in the game. All of the level three careers just have that random dude we have to switch to and meet a special need for, like social or hygiene or hunger. Other than that, it's just mini game after mini game after mini game until we are in the green enough to complete the career. While we jump from district to district, knocking out jobs, we also get around to doing a lot of random herb goals. I've already unlocked all the social interactions. Some of them are power socials. Others are regular socials, and some are the Rolanda's tag quests. I do, unfortunately, need to tag some herbs' faces. The first being Fergie's. I feel so bad. We were tight. I have two other Sims' faces to tag, but the interaction was actually proving to be hard to successfully do. If a social interaction is yellow, it has a small chance of working, and I'm assuming red means no chance. So I have to kind of fiddle with my relationships with those Sims until the interaction works. It would have been easier to switch clothes probably, but this method didn't take too long, actually. The most interesting quest in the game has to be Roxana's style quest. I need to dress String Bean in loop-de-loop -loop to match the style in the foundry. To do this, I have to befriend them enough to get them to join my crew. If they were in a good enough mood and my friendship was high enough with them, they become a sim I can switch back and forth with and control. I did decide to change my outfit to befriend String Bean, since our interactions were not going to be very successful without skating swag. But after getting them to join my crew, I call them over to the foundry one by one and switch control to their herbs so I can change up their style. Both of them got makeovers and quest complete. So now that we have done all of that, the last thing that we need to do is knock out all of the villain goals. As we've seen, each district has one of three villains that comes by to rain terror on its inhabitants, whether by robbing them or just being general nuisances. After performing a sick ass power social on them, they drop a part of Darius's machine and get out of Dodge. I love sticking it to my landlord in particular. Fucking dick. One kind of silly thing, I ran out of power social supplies. I didn't realize that the power socials were actually tied to items in my inventory. In order to get more of those items, I need to attend the parties at midnight and wait for Darius to show up and give me more supplies for the appropriate social. And then I wait. I figured out that the villains show up at 1.40 p.m on the dot in each district. So I do a lot of waiting for them to appear and in between I'll collect more power social items. In general, this is my last real set of tasks. So I hang out in my apartment a lot. This place needs a good clean anyways. Look at this mess. Eventually we got our very last villain. Our hard work has paid off. We really made it folks. Darius is giving us the key to his penthouse. We even get this cool cutscene where we get the key and Darius rides off in a bus blimp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This place is really nice. We have a whole patio with a hot tub and a putting green and a super nice interior. Our final villain gave us the last part of the secret machine, which is a counterfeit simoleon maker. Hell yeah. I don't have a good enough mood to use it. So I of course have to trick out my place with all the amenities. Decorating gave us our final pet a monkey. He's a cool little guy. He's actually like a small child, really. I love that he's got a little outfit. And now we're free to print money in our fancy new penthouse apartment. That's pretty much it. We've done all we can do here, I think. I don't know. All goals complete. We're stupid famous and have a nice place with a monkey. What more could a girl ask for?
I loved this one. While I did think it got a little bit repetitive, this game just really hit a lot of boxes for me. I really like how the jobs are interactive. I love like dressing up your sim each time you go to a new area. I kind of really liked the whole like buying clothes and buying furniture thing. I did miss having like a proper build and buy mode because it is sort of inconvenient to go to each district just to get like the proper furniture. It would have been perfectly fine to just have a buy mode and have things unlock as you progress. What else? Um, love in the Black Eyed Peas thing. <laughs> I really love when The Sims collabs with random musical artists. Katy Perry's Sweet Treats is a highlight for me. <laughs> so this one was just super, super fun. And I just, I felt like it was the perfect console Sims game. It wasn't really trying to be anything that it's not. The Herbs is just such a good console Sims game. I can't rave about it enough. You know what else is really good? My Squarespace website. Yeah, if you're in need of a website, today's sponsor Squarespace is a great place to start. They have tons of professional and clean templates to help you get started. And it's really easy to customize your website, whether it's the colors, the fonts, you can embed photos and videos, just whatever you need to get it where it needs to be. I imagine that a lot of us probably think that creating a website is this big daunting task and it's just like super, super complicated. But Squarespace makes it easy for any small business owner to build the website that they need. They have tons of templates for restaurant owners. You could be a blogger, an artist in need of a portfolio, an influencer, merchants, and so many more. It is easier than ever to sell product online, and Squarespace's e-commerce tools make it simple to get your store up and running. For those that are selling services, you can make appointments and send your clients invoices directly through Squarespace's website. And Squarespace works with many well-known third-party extensions to help you better manage your business. I love I love having a website to put any sort of relevant YouTube information on there. From my favorite Stardew mods to the Animal Crossing codes that I use on my island. It's great and it makes me look super professional. If you're in need of a website, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you are ready to launch with one of Squarespace's many amazing templates, go to squarespace.com slash list the last or use my code list the last and you will get 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. So, if you have any recommendations for any other Sims games on console you would like me to play, let me know. I, of course, have a big mega list, but sometimes you guys suggest things that I have legitimately never heard of, so I always love to hear from you guys. If you liked this video, you might like the video where I played all of the Sims busting out. Make sure to go check that out. I also have a second channel. I have a second channel that has been dead for a long time, but I am attempting to revive it sometime this month. So if you would like to subscribe to that, I'll put it up on the screen and in the description and everything. 